back in Glasgow at the moment, so everything is going to look and sound just a little bit different, but we'll make do with what we've got. Uh, so one of the first places I went to, rather predictably, when I got back to Glasgow, was Poundland to see if they had anything new. And one of the things they have, and these are not a pound, these are five pounds each, are neon ornaments. And by neon ornaments, I actually mean they're LED, but they're styled on the traditional neon shapes. And they had two. I'm not sure how bright this one's going to be. It's not going to be bright because I've been testing it with... Uh, no, that's not bright at all, is it? Uh, I've been testing it with uh, nickel metal hydride cells because it only takes two cells. And I wanted to see how the intensity stays even through the different colours because this has this sort of yellow at the base and it's got green at the top, whereas this one has blue and the body and this sort of yellow beak. But... It appears that they're gallium nitride type LEDs because they appear to be sort of phosphor based. They're, they're connected, as far as I can see, just in parallel with the rest of the LEDs, but they stay at the same intensity as the battery goes down, which is good. It means they're quite, quite well matched. So I'm kind of interested in taking this one to bits, and particularly the toucan, because it's got a re entrant shape as such. Instead of just one line that goes around the whole outside, it has. Presumably got a splice in here for the two colours on the tape, but also it must have a complete loop around and then a splice taken off midpoint. So that's why I'm going to take this one to bits. And I have to say these uh, are very good. You know, in the dark, they, they look just like the traditional neon ornaments, but obviously a lot cheaper and more robust and much easier to get these, these days. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and separate this because I know from po poking about it so far that... This plastic, the front translucent section, comes out, but it's not going to come out easily because uh, it's all trapped in where it goes into this base. A base that is made of MDF with laminate on it. But anyway, I digress. I'm just trying to get comfortable here. I'm going to start by popping out the battery compartment. I think everything is just glued in this. So there is the... And that's glued in as well. Okay. So let's try and liberate this. If this is glued in too tightly, loud cracking, crunching noises, then I'll pause momentarily while I get it out. Oh, no, that's promising. Okay, I did push it in the wrong way, but that's okay. I can get it out the other way with brute force and ignorance. Is that battery pack going to go through? No, it's not. Okay. Off comes the battery pack. Chop, chop. There we go. So here is the neonish type bit itself. Is this going to come apart easily? Do I have a different type of screwdriver here to prise it open? That's kind of glued at the base. I think that might be the glue that was actually holding it into the base. So I know the rough layer of this because I've prized it up just enough to have a wee peek inside before and see how it was going to come apart. So let's try and separate this. And you'll already be able to see the LED tape in here. And it's a very clever bit of design because it's based on this sort of typical uh, neon effect, the side emitting uh, tape, where it emits into the side and then goes into a sort of light box so it diffuses it so you can't see the pixel pixels of the LEDs. Uh, this is not coming apart easily. I'm going to have to pause momentarily while I just prise this to bits. Oh yes, this is very clever. So they've got two sections. They've got the opaque plastic light box and they've got the translucent section that supports the LED tape plus diffuses it. So instead of the LEDs actually being sat into the back of this, it's easier, easier to put it uh, side on and run it round. And that also means you don't see the dottiness of the LEDs coming through the translucent plastic because the light is bounced. It means it's less efficient, but you still get quite a lot of light out. And the LED tape, it does hint that this can have the LED tape replaced if you wanted custom colours. Quite hard to go, I have to say. It fits in purely as a friction fit, but I did chew up a bit with the screwdriver, taking it out, trying to prise it out and part of it. But it's a very uh, clever arrangement here. So the light uh, is emitted sideways and diffuses in the light box out the front as a soft glow. But it's interesting that the LED tape is custom for the task because they've got different colours of LEDs, but they're not just spliced. It's not like two sections. It's not the blue and then going on to the orange with a, a solder blob at this point. Although having said that, if you look in here, 
you can see it's a standard sort of 500 millimeter strips that they have uh, stuck them end to end to make a longer strip. But they have uh, custom populated this in strips just purely for this effect. And it's also quite neat that they've tapped the feed onto it for the parallel array of LEDs roughly in a midpoint. And because of that, because the blue runs up this side and round the eye, it means that the tape literally runs up round and then ends here. Whereas for the orange, they've got the it starts off with the same blue tape running up the rest of the body around here and then where it goes into the beak it just changes to the orange LEDs and then ends just the tape is just cut off at that end there so that means there's no sort of coloured splices that as I thought there might be especially I was thinking there might be there but it's also quite clever that by feeding it from not a perfect midpoint but a roughly a central position it also means that they can effectively uh, reduce the reduction intensity you get with large parallel strings like this where as the current is drawn along the run the voltage drops slightly and it results in LEDs being a wee bit dimmer at the end. Not that that would be a major problem with this size of thing but it's very good, it's very neat, it's nicely implemented and the look is it's just, I, I hate to say this uh, because well I've got friends who work in the neon, neon industry and I was a big, well I am a big fan of real neon uh, but I have to say, for the neon ornaments, this is actually maybe a better option because it's so robust and it looks so good and it looks so diffused. It works very well. But if you're looking for real neon, nothing beats real neon uh, if you're looking for custom, really uniquely custom shapes. But this uh, is definitely at £5. is somewhat more affordable. Runs on the uh, two AA cells in the battery pack. It runs for a very long time, indeed. And it will run off the rechargeables, although as the voltage goes down, then the intensity will uh, decrease, as happens with nickel metal hydrides, because their uh, cell voltage is typically about 1.2 volts during discharge. It means that the combined two cells is about 2.4 volts. But having said that, if you wanted, you could uh, convert this with a a couple of resistors, a couple of 10 ohm resistors, as is usual for when I'm doing things like this. And you can convert it to run it off a USB power supply instead if you just wanted it permanently lit and not too bright because ultimately the lower intensity you run it, then the longer its life is going to be because the LEDs just that last that much longer. So that's neat. That's very neat. I do like the construction of that, particularly the way they've split it in the middle and then just fanned the colours out so that there's no, uh, there's no splicing. I, I had it in mind they might have actually spliced this onto one of the solder connections there, but they haven't. It's just uh, two completely different ends of the tape. It does also allude, though, that you could theoretically um, put in some new tape if you get it's about is that six millimeter wide uh, roughly quarter of an inch wide that tape I'm not sure if it's six or seven millimeter but uh, it alludes to the fact you could get 12 volt tape if you wanted and you could actually make a 12 volt version just by putting in the tape uh, as desired of the appropriate voltage it's pretty good i do like this it's a very neat result